Is seven and a half inches really enough to satisfy her? Will Tay Tay decide 300 is enough for tiny Texan deer? Find out in this episode of Art Busters. <laughs> Welcome to the ARFCOM Gel Testing Federation Network. Ladies and gentlemen, Kulaks and dissidents, tonight we are going to witness the most anticipated match in the history of the ARFCOM Gel Testing Federation for the Heavyweight Short Boy Championship of the World! Are you ready? In this corner, the new challenger weighing in at 110 grains of polymer tipped explosive performance coming all the way to you from Manitowoc, Wisconsin. Don't you dare call him 762 by 35, the offense landed and always thick. In the opposing corner, the current intercontinental champion and voted overall most eligible bachelor weighing in at 62 grains of tactical bonded soft point, trained in the dark arts of the Lake City Dojo deep under Anoka, Minnesota, the 5562! Welcome to the ARFCOM Gel Testing Federation Network. Hello and welcome to another ballistic gel test thing. We're glad you made it. Today we are testing a tale as old as time. One often argued in homes around the world, how many inches is really enough? Z settle down. How many inches of barrel is enough for an effective home defense rifle? As you may know, I am not a fan of 7.62 by 35 millimeter. It is expensive. It has underwhelming performance at distance, and I'm not shooting subsonics operating operationally to neutralize enemy OPs, so I could care less about cycling subs. No disrespect intended, sir, but shove it up your ass. However, my man Tay Tay loves the stuff and wants to use it for deer hunting this year. I guess so the deer won't hear him take out the sentries and infiltrate their perimeter on account of how animals getting shot to death never make any noise, no matter how low being shot to death was on their daily agenda, and 200 grains of metal smacks into meat and breaks bone in total silence at 900 feet per second. Not to say 300 can't do the job, of course. And since he's shooting those little baby Texan deer, then you could probably use just a slingshot or sharp rocks. You may also know I favor 556 as the good lord intended. And I don't judge about your length. You run what you brung, but come to party, right? However, the 300 fanboys insist their choice is superior because 556 is you know, basically a nerf dart out of anything shorter than 10 and a half inches, and that's just way too long to maneuver through a single wide trailer stacked floor to ceiling with cat litter bags and old auto traders. So I'm not here to prove to you 556 is better than 300 AAC out of a really short barrel. I'm here to find out if 556 is still a viable choice at this barrel length. We picked the best ammo for each in this application. Specifically, we are testing a Federal Fusion 62 grain bonded soft point from a seven and a half inch upper and a 110 grain VMAX 300 blackout made by Ammo Inc. from an eight inch upper. So let's get out to Cowtown and shoot these cute little shorties and see what happens. Thanks to our sponsor Spartan Armor Systems for making this video possible. Spartan Armor Systems is dedicated to providing the best American-made body armor in the industry for civilians, law enforcement, and the military. You can find out more at SpartanArmorSystems.com. Protect what's yours. Yeah, let's do it. I'm pumped. How about 
me. We got a nice head in here. That's beautiful. It's always, I'm always not quite sure whether I'm gonna get a good hit on these because I'm such a terrible shot, right? Um, no, I mean, yes, but because of the sight offset, the height over bore with a rifle, shooting at close targets is always a little sketchy, especially if you're not super familiar with the holdover with this particular sight. In this case, I'm using this uh, 22 long rifle sight from Primary Arms because the BDC actually lines up pretty close with 300 blackout and subsonic. The important thing is we got it in the block and it stopped. And that also looks like just ideal performance. Yeah, looks like we're going to have to throw some more uh, plywood on this table because <laughs> the TSC just stomped all over it. Let me grab my tape measure and some forceps and we'll get some measurements off of this. People in the comments are always asking me why I'm measuring with decimals and inches. Well, that's because this tape measure is marked in tenths. And this is 14.3 inches, which is as perfect as it could possibly be. We're talking about Mary Poppins level of perfection. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! Looks like we got quite a bit of retained weight. Nice wide frontal area. We did get a bit of fragmentation along the way, but really not very many lead fragments in here. If you dig through that, you can see there's a little polymer tip from the VMAX, and there's a couple of lead fragments in here, but that's not a lot. That's looking pretty damn good. Well, folks, we're gonna do some more measurements. We're gonna um, weigh the projectile and get some measurements of the expanded diameter when I get home. And of course, as always, we'll do some, uh, some more analysis and green screen and what, whatnot. But to have any real comparison, to get to the point of this video, we got to get the 5.56 in the gelatin too. Because we already knew that 300, 110 grain SST does do a really good job. Let's see what 5.56 does in ballistic gelatin out of a crazy short barrel. looks gorgeous. So you see a whole bunch of disruption up front here. We'll see it later. You've already seen it on the high speed, but that means there was a big, huge temporary stretch cavity in here, and the penetration is fairly deep, though. Looks like it got on into this second block. I'll shoot one more through into a fresh backer block just to see if we can get a better idea of how deep this stuff goes. Hey, I didn't see you there. So I'm glad we did this a second time. Um, we got the bullet to stop in the block this time, but now we got it stopped here in the block. We got a really good measurement on it, so we know exactly 
15.4 inches. It's very good. It's slightly deeper than the 300, but this is still doing pretty darn well. Again, 5.56, not remotely a Nerf dart out of a 7.5 inch barrel. Okay, so let's bottom line this. For me, the number one takeaway here is both calibers produce suitable results for home defense out of a barrel this short with the right ammo. I honestly expected the 300 to have a larger edge, but this was really close. Both produced impressive temporary stretch cavities of surprisingly similar size. Both expanded and penetrated to optimal depth. The VMAX fragmented a bit while the Fusion did not, but those differences are more a result of bullet construction than they are caliber choice. One thing also worth noting is the 223 came screaming out of the muzzle at almost 2300 feet per second while the 300 was just below that magic 2000 foot per second threshold Dr. Fackler first proposed as the point where the size of the temporary stretch cavity exceeds the elastic limit of most human tissues and they begin to tear. But like I said, the temporary cavity on both was really nice and big, so I think Fackler's threshold is more of a general rule of thumb, and heavier bullets might just get away with lower velocity. And, as always, these short barrel tests also give you an idea of what these projectiles will do further downrange if you've got a longer barrel. Just plug your numbers into a ballistic calculator, and it'll tell you how far away you'll get this performance. What do you think? Is 556 worthless from a barrel this short? Is 300 even really doing any better? Comment below. The stunning high speed you see in this video was captured using a Phantom V642 graciously provided by Aimed Research. If you are interested in renting a Phantom or other high speed camera for your own ballistic or industrial projects, you can contact Aimed Research with the info down there in the doobly doo. I sure hope you found this video informative, or at the very least entertaining. If you want to help us keep bringing you banger content like this, please support the folks who support us. Not only does TNVC.com give you night vision with that cool, refreshing, never bitter taste that goes down smooth, they also have mounts, lights, training, swag, and all sorts of other 99% cruelty-free gear to make you the bump in the night. Remember kids, if you're not subscribed to the ARFCOM YouTube channel, you make puppies cry and Captain America is disappointed. I love you.